right, Mr. Profam. So, Lantern Ride is here once again. And as usual, every single Lantern Ride, we get to choose our favorite four star leeway character, which of course usually is a pretty tough choice, even for me as well, who's already got most of the C6 of the four stars. But even when there's only around two to three options left, there's still a bit of a decision making. So, which is why we have today a very important video discussing which four star character is the best for you to be choosing because of course if you are more of a free to play getting your desired four star constellation isn't always an easy thing especially when the four star roster is just increasing patch by patch now guys i want to give a huge shout out for today's sponsor surfshark vpn they're having a huge deal for us there's a link down below with my code supra to get up to six additional months for free i've been very happy with this service surfshark vpn is the only privacy products that allows unlimited simultaneous devices most of them limit you but not surfshark you can have it on your phones your desktop as many devices as you want so surfshark encrypts your data to keep it safe it's an extra layer of security for your photos your videos all of your personal stuff so no one can see also being a vpn it swaps the real location of your devices with a new one or in other words it's your ip address this way you can basically virtually travel to any country around the world it is very easy to use with a simple click of a button you're basically there to where you want to be if you're an anime lover like me and would love to get access to a giant anime library on netflix then you can just simply click to japan and voila you now got a lot of anime to watch to your heart content and what's great for us gamers is that you can now game in full privacy and security that includes big ones like hiding your IP, discords and other chats and now you don't really have to worry about it anymore. It also even potentially allows you to access gaming servers that weren't available in your countries before. Protection is truly key guys. I'm sure any of you who have had your Genshin Impact account hacked before can truly understand this. So use my code SUPRA to get up to 6 at additional month for free there will be a link down in my description and if for whatever reason you're unhappy then again they do have a 30 day money back guarantee so there is absolutely no risk for you to try out for yourself thank you surfshark again for providing us a very good deal Now, how the video will go is I'll basically go through the four star character in terms of pros and cons, and basically refreshing your minds in terms of what exactly is their strengths and weaknesses, as well as their best constellations. So, if you are kind of on the fence of which character you want to choose, you will have a better idea of your desired constellation on that character. Now, also, there's one more thing I'd like to get out of the way, and yes, that is Xiangling and Xingqiu. For while well, I think these are the two characters where i don't really have to discuss too much about them because while well, if you have been playing genshin impact for a while you know that these two characters are basically five stars in disguise so generally speaking aiming for these characters to go up all the way to c6 is kind of like quote unquote a must on every single one of your account especially if you are free to play so definitely guys if on your account you haven't already got any of these two characters at c6 i would definitely recommend you to prioritize choosing either one of them for Sincho guys generally you want to have him at least at a c2 because that's where he get his burst duration extended by three seconds as well as a 15 percent hydro resistance decrease when hitting by rain sword so c2 Sincho is a very good constellation on him and you'd want at least that amount on Sincho. as for shangling you would want to have her at least at a c4 because that's when her burst duration is increased by a 40 percent or in other words that is a 14 second uptime which is really really good for shangling so those are the constellations you want to aim for for these two characters if you haven't already got many of their cons so that's a really important thing to keep in mind now we move on to discussing some of the rest character in non-particular order and then at the end i will basically give my personal advice in terms of whichever character you want to choose if you already have you know shangling and xingqiu already at max constellation so first off we have yao yao still an absolutely amazing character guys reason being she is a dendro healer with a very very good dendro application so 
for example, if you don't have Baiju on your account, you can technically have and save for a Yao Yao, try to get her constellation and she will still do absolutely fantastic, and then save your pools on other characters. For having Yao Yao on your account, you realize that many of the time team building regarding Dendro reaction is a lot easier for you because of course basically every single team would like to have a healer well unless you are kind of like a speed runner or you're more focusing on shield or you're very good at eye framing but most of us would definitely want a healer on our team and since Dendro reaction is such meta right now Yao Yao is in very high demand most of the time. What's also very good about Yao Yao is that she doesn't just have the ability to heal your on field character only but during her burst she have access to team wide healing as well which is really really nice and a decent teammate if you're focusing on using Furina for example and slotting them on a Nilu Bloom team making up a very powerful updated Nilu Bloom team and that's something I've been personally using for the past months. Generally the biggest downside with Yao Yao right now is that her burst and team wide healing does require her to be on field so most of the time her team wide healing is only there for emergency healing or when your team is on downtime because if you have Yao Yao staying on field for too long you're basically losing out on dps because yes yao yao most of the time isn't going to be doing damage for you now overall yao yao sc0 is a very perfect character already but if you want constellations then her c1 is generally going to be her best because she has access to giving a 15 dendro damage bonus for your active character as well as stamina regeneration so if you're focusing on having yao yao you know on a dendro focused team when you're having for example our hatham or nahida being on field then c1 on Yao Yao is going to be very very good otherwise she being at C0 is very good already. Up next we have Yunjin one of the best normal attack buffer in the game. Very easy to build Yunjin guys because you just focus on her defense stats and that is pretty good. So if your team is having character that really focuses on doing normal attack damage for example your Mia or Wandra for example if you are missing out on Farzan then Yunjin is a really good buffer for this and the reason why Yunjin is also very very good is she's a competitive top tier buffer to Bennett but of course focusing on no more attack so technically you can actually save Bennett for other teams when you're having Yunjin's on your account. The only downside to Yunjin I would say most of the time is that one she's a geo character so many of the time she doesn't always fit on your specific team in terms of reactions and two other than buffing she doesn't really have access to other anything else so the only thing she can do is support your team and like Bennett who can also heal and sometimes do very very good vaporize damage so that's some of the thing you want to look out for however Junjin's also have some of the best constellation on her as well focusing very much on to buffing no more attack so yeah the more constellation you have on Junjin, the higher no more attack damage she is able to buff generally guys all her throws c2 c4 and c6 and have very significant buff and changes to Junjin herself so generally if you don't know any one to choose then you can try aiming for at least a c2 Junjin. but yes of course if your team is more focusing on normal attacking character you definitely want to always try to have a c6 Junjin on your account next let's touch on one of the newest character we have in the game Garmin now as you might have heard many of us has been saying that Garmin skills has basically the highest scaling as a four star character and there is a lot of potential to him and while yes I do say that Garmin has very very good potential however regarding Garmin guys personally I would say that he's more or less going to be a preference character because first of all his gameplay is going to be very fun new plunging attack gameplay for you and will be able to dish out a very high number however his team guys is very very invested and expensive at that because first of all not only that you want a very high constellation Garmin in order for him to be competitive in terms of damage wise in the meta ideally having him at c6 is where it may makes a huge difference for him but also he wants Xian Yun who is a new 5 star character that of course is coming on his very first banner but also he would require you to have kind of like a Bennett on his team too so yes overall as you can have seen you'll be required to pull a lot of 
of gems in order for you to build a very good garment as well as taking up some of the best character you have on your account in order to build the best team that you have for him which is kind of like a downside i see to him at this point in time other than that guys i would say he's pretty good and a nice character for you to invest long term so like even if you don't have you know his constellations you might be able to get his c6 down the line but overall the main reason why he's more or less a preference character because while yeah we have a shangling in this choosing roster so if you're someone who haven't got enough shangling constellation you're most likely going to get shangling over garming Moving on, we have Beidou, still a very good 4-star sub-DPS Electro character that you can have. Her burst is where she's able to trigger that sub-DPS off-field damage to help you out, including Electro applications. But well, of course, you still need to weave in your normal attack and therefore burst to be triggered. But also, she has really nice countering mechanics as well. And if you're able to counter at the perfect time, Beidou is also able to do a lot of damage off of that. However, her popularity has went down a little bit for generally she's a character that don't trigger dendro cores and of course dendro reactions as you know is a very much meta teams on most of the gameplay nowadays so many of the times we're just going to be choosing kind of like kuki shinobu to be slotted on the team for dendro core triggering now of course you can also have beido as a second electro character however many of the time that slot is kind of saved for a specific on-field electro character you know like Sino, Raiden on-field or off-field is still fine or you know Kujin for example. So unless you're playing a mono electro team, Beidou many of the time isn't going to be used. However, if your account is lacking in electro character and you'll have the ability to invest in at least a C2 Beidou, a C2 Beidou is a very good character but the DPS increase on Beidou is basically around 50% if you're using her at maximum potential. So for example, if you're missing out on Fischl, Beidou can definitely be in that slot for the time being on your account. Moving on, we have Yan Fei, a well-known 4-star pyro hyper carry. While Yan Fei gameplay mechanics is pretty unique because she heavily relies on charge attack. Plus, of course, as a 4-star character, especially when you have a high constellation Yan Fei, she's able to deal very very good numbers. But once again, since Yan Fei is a pyro hyper carry, she's in a very competitive situation because nowadays we just have so many good good pyro dps out there already however if you're someone who lacks yanfei she's still able to do very good numbers for you especially when her most important constellation is only at c1 because it does reduce your stamina consumption of charge attack which is very valuable on yanfei therefore you don't really have to invest too much into her constellations and still be able to enjoy some of her best benefits up next we have ning wang now believe it or not ning wang is still technically a a pretty valuable character especially if you are free to play and focusing on a geo damage team for example if you have just put for navia now the thing is with ning wang if you still want to have her as a happy carry she still have that high single target damage potential and also her burst can do very high numbers as well which is really really nice but what makes her all so good is from her passive talent that increase your geo damage which is why when you're having ning wang on your team you can technically have her as a burst dps of field trigger her burst whenever possible and still cast out her e skill for your on field geo character to have their geo damage increase which is really really nice now of course in terms of geo hyper carry she cannot compare it up to navia because while navia is technically the best geo dps we have in the game right now but ningwa can definitely works pretty well on navia's team if you're on an account that don't really have many geo character to work with ningwa best comes constellation is going to be her c2 because it's a lot easier for ningguang to manage her jade screen on field for it is a very important skill that she must have for as you know geo construct can easily be broken if you don't set it up correctly plus c2 also give her a lot more potential when it comes to energy regen as well so that's a very nice constellation for her to have next we have chong yun so what chong yun popularity have been decreasing greatly over the years but he still has some of the most unique skill we have in the game and it is cryo infusion on top of that if you have his constellation you also have access to very rare skill when it comes to decrease your cooldown times by 15 percent of your skills and burst so while cryo team's popularity have been decreasing a bit ever since dendro reaction came because yeah it kind of sucks that cryo don't really have any reactions regarding
regarding Dendro. But while if you're somebody who's lacking in a cryo DPS and you want to play a cryo teams, then Chong Yun can be a character fitting in that slot for you. However, his best potential if you want to have him as a cryo DPS would definitely when it comes to him being at C6 because that's when his maximum potential is released. And C6 Chong Yun definitely has the potential to deal very, very good numbers if you use him correctly. So overall, Chong Yun is going to be a preference character for you to go for and definitely not going to be on our priority list for now. And then lastly, we have Sin Yan. Well, in terms of skills and kit wise, I'm pretty sure most of us know that Sin Yan is technically the worst character in the game. But if you're still some of the few players who really enjoy Sin Yan, then well, of course, over the years, she still have some potential that she can do pretty decently well. For yeah, she is a pyro shielder if you don't really have Toma yet on your account. And she does have access to pretty decent pyro applications whenever you use Sin Yan correctly. If you do invest into her, Sin Yan can still do damage. And while if you're also some of the few player who focuses on using physical damage character, then C4 Sin Yan is technically her overall very good constellations because she has access to that physical resistance decrease. And overall, you have access to some of her earlier constellation as well, which is pretty nice for Sin Yan as a character. But once again, yes, most of us won't be choosing Sin Yan and it's very much going to be on preference choosing. And so guys, that's basically most of the important note you want to remember on these four star characters. Of course, I've mentioned apart from Shaolin and Sing Cho, who are very important for you to choose if you haven't got their maximum constellations. It's going to be my priority list in terms of the other four stars if you're on the fence of not knowing who to choose other than Sing Cho and Shang Ling. So first on the list is definitely going to be Yao Yao. If you haven't already got Yao Yao, pick her now. Very valuable character on most of the Dendro teams. Dendro application on Yao Yao is very, very good. And she's pretty much absolutely valuable on any of your account. Yun Jin is going to be coming up after Yao Yao since she is more of a situational buffer in terms of no more attack. This, of course, varies in your account. However, getting Yun Jin's and Yun Jin constellation is never going to be a bad thing because who knows down the line, you want to pull for a character that's very dedicated into no more attack. So investing into Yun Jin is always going to be a good choice no matter what, considering her constellations are very good. Up next, I'll just give it to Garming because he's a newest four-star character. He's very fun to play even though I haven't tested him out. I can almost guarantee that. Very good looking animation character, but of course his scaling is very good and the more constellation you have on Garming, the more powerful he's going to become and being valuable on your account. So yes, Garming is going to take the third slot. After that, we have Beidou, even though her popularity have decreased, she's still going to be a pretty valuable character if you're lacking in many of the four-star electro character. Once you hit that C2 on Beidou, she's a very powerful electro unit, especially in group situation for you. After that, it's going to be Ningguang. Of course, Ningguang is more or less going to be a situational character depending on if you're using a Geo team or not. But overall, still a pretty fine character in terms of being on a burst sub DPS role for you and a little bit of Geo damage support. And then there is Yanfei, again, preference character since she is a pyro hyper carry, but Yanfei is still pretty fun to play and unique in terms of charge attack animation. Then here we have Chong Yun, a preference character when it comes to cryo building team if you want to have him as a cryo DPS. And then lastly, it's definitely going to be Sin Yan. So overall, those would be everything I have to say regarding the free four star leeway character you have the ability to choose. If you have any question, guys, leave it down in the comment section and I or some other lovely Genshin player will get to you there. So guys, I know that patch 4.4 will have a lot of good 5-star character coming and so if you're still on the fence and don't know who to choose, be sure to check out this video of mine as I'm sure it will be very valuable to you in terms of deciding to pull. If you're new to the channel guys, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate you guys staying with me till this part of the video guys and with that, I wish you a super day and I'll catch you on my next video.